Good morning, students. Today we come to the end of the lesson of the chapter Atmosphere. And in this module, we will learn about the greenhouse effect, global warming, and the effects of global warming. Now we all know that the sun is the ultimate source of heat and light. And we all know that the sun is illuminating mass of extremely hot gases. Now the sun's energy travels through the earth as electromagnetic radiation in the form of short wave. So here we can see that the sun's energy is reaching the earth in the form of short wavelength radiation and it passes through the atmosphere. Earlier we have already learned that the atmosphere is a very poor conductor of heat. It does not absorb this short wavelength of radiation. In fact, the atmosphere absorbs the terrestrial radiation which is in the form of infrared rays. Now the absorbed heat is then radiated in the form of long wavelength radiation or infrared rays. Some of the gases in the atmosphere acts like a glass or a greenhouse. So here in this picture you can see a glass house. We also call it a greenhouse. Now in this glass house or greenhouse these are mostly constructed in very cold countries where it is very difficult to grow certain fruits and vegetables because of the low temperature. Now this structure which is made up of glass allows the sun's heat to enter but does not allow the heat to be liberated. As a result, the area inside the glass house or a greenhouse remains very warm. The earth behaves exactly like a glass house or a greenhouse. The atmosphere allows the earth to be warmed by the short wavelength radiation. The atmosphere does not get warm, but it allows the earth to get warmed by the short wavelength radiation. And after the sunset, the earth begins to release the heat, which is in the form of long wavelength or infrared rays. That infrared rays or long wavelength radiation heats up the atmosphere. So this is how the atmosphere gets heated and the carbon dioxide and water vapor plays a very important and significant role in heating up the atmosphere. Without this greenhouse effect, the earth would have been a very cold place which would not have been able to sustain life. Greenhouse gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, chlorofluorocarbons, methane and nitrogen oxide. So in this picture, you can very clearly see how the greenhouse effect is working. That is, the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere retains the heat and keeps the earth warmer. The earth is absorbing the short wavelength radiation from the sun and the atmosphere gets heated by the long wavelength radiation which is being given by the surface of the earth. Let us now learn about global warming. 
Now, due to the solar energy which is incep incepted by the earth, the earth radiates energy into outer space. The incoming and outgoing radiation processes are simultaneously taking place. The balance between the sun's heat that reaches the earth and the heat radiated by the earth into space determines the temperature of the surface of the earth. So there has to be a balance of the, the heat intake and the heat which is given out by the earth. Now, according to some climatologists, the temperature of the earth is increasing at an alarming rate and it is mainly due to the reckless behavior of human beings. Human beings are thoughtlessly cutting down trees, burning vegetation, excessively using fossil fuels and all this has increased the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. Now, this carbon dioxide is acting like a blanket, not allowing the outgoing infrared rays or long wavelength radiation to escape into space. As a result, the Lower atmosphere is getting warmer due to the heat trapped and the surface of the earth is becoming hotter and hotter. Now this results in the gradual increase in temperature and that causes a change in the climatic conditions regionally as well as at a global level. Now, effects of global warming has already started to be shown everywhere around the world. We can see that glaciers have started to melt. Temperatures over land have started to increase. Mountains which used to have snow cover higher have now come to a lower level. The tree lines have started to shift polewards or upwards. That means lower levels trees are becoming almost extinct. Spring is coming earlier. That means winter is for a very few days. Species migrating polewards or they are moving upwards towards the mountain. Temperature is increasing in the seas. The ice caps are melting and the glaciers are becoming lesser. There is a rise in the sea level. Humidity has started to increase. Air temperature near the surface have also started to increase. Sea level has started to increase. The ice in the sea level is becoming less. Ocean heat is becoming higher. Temperature over the ocean is also becoming higher. Sea surface temperature is also increasing. Ice sheets are breaking. Elsewhere we find corals are becoming lesser because they are getting adversely affected due to increase in the temperature of the sea. There is widespread floods and the monsoons and other weather patterns have become very disturbed. So serious steps needs to be taken to retard the process of global warming. For, for this, we need to plant more and more trees, conserve our forest and wildlife, 
reduce the amount of carbon dioxide released by us and CFCs. Less use of chemical fertilizers, more use of organic fertilizers is the call of the day and using alternative sources of energy so that there is less burning of fossil fuels. So it is very important for us to stop this global warming. So with this, we end this lesson that is atmosphere. Throughout the journey of this atmosphere, we have learned several topics and we have focused on several vital and important aspects. I hope you have enjoyed this journey of this lesson of atmosphere with me. That is what we have enough time for. Thank you.